Hvem så rest hjemme i øh, um, 50 vi har sav? Det er 2,5 dage ago. Ja, ikke? 2,5 dage ago, og det er morgenen, hvad så? Det er bare en smags af før. Nej, jeg skal ikke fokus den der. Laser fokus. Du don't, um, don't do that as much now, don't you know? Mate, see, when I do it, I get tunnel vision, bro. Aye. Well, that's the only thing you focus on. The only thing I really have sex myself about is success. Aye. <laughs> and, that's, and do you just stare? Like, with you, obviously in a mirror. What I do is, mate, I sh- uh, I've got a big manifest board, bro, and it says, like, all my goals, and I'll just stand in front of that and just fucking go ham, mate. So sticky at the bottom. Stick this guy that's got a, I've got a catcher at the bottom, mate. Oh, right, aye. Like um, a wee, like the toasty makers. Like a guy, catches. mate, a guy who oh, was like a wee, uh, kind of net sort of device and he just catches the the, the um, produce the produce but um, do you um, do you like drag it out do you like make yourself dinner on that or is it just like oh, pff, get out of the way uh, no I would say it's more of a ritual no, not a ritual I would say it's more of a, a, a routine thing because right, right. I think like if you want success in life um, you should be sort of having sex with yourself in front of your manifestation board aye, aye. and I think that's just key That is. That, that is. is key. It's the first key to success. Everybody knows that, but uh, you know, breaking down any doors here, no breaking boundaries here. Uh, uh, is a uh, a, a routinal? Is it routine? Routinal? 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 That does. That's not. That's, that's a place that I uh, um, smashed a guy in Mexico. Ah, uh, yeah, I was going to say that's Spanish for um, God willing. Aye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And God willing, I would I would say that's a good message to. Send it to the people, and especially the people that are in need of a claim at the moment, mate. Oh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot, there. there's a lot of claimers out there claiming for a variety of things. Some quite outlandish, some very, very valid. Um, and I think the best place to go for a claim as well, Jamie. It's G four claims. G four claims. claims. Oh no. And that is um, some vocal training that I've been doing recently. Yeah, so that was really good. That's so, <laughs> that was uh, really, really good. Oh, I know, I know, baby. So, if you want to, or maybe start a singing podcast um, as well, you know, you don't need to claim it, and you can come right down here, get your wee tush down here, and sit in the hot seat. If you're looking at us two and going, they two charlatans can do it, anybody can do it. Come and get a bash in. Very valid thought you're having there, and yeah, get in contact with Greg. Podcast manager, yeah. Um, the stuff's in the description to get a hold of him. You've got their Instagram. You've also got their just normal G4 Claims Instagram. We'll put the website and everything down there. But, aye, right, guys, go and claim with the G4 Claims. G4 Claims. Balls. Deep fried number four. Is it four? It is, no. is it? So I thought it was five. Five? Psh, maybe um maybe you're for the future. I think I might be, mate. How can how can I even know it? How how can you How can <laughs> tell if you're from future or no, but how can prove it? Mate. How can prove it but what the what the difference in the space suits? <sighs> so you are like a Futuristic version of me mm-hmm. at the moment. In every way. In every single way. But deep fried, we're back, baby. I've been out in these streets for a long time, mate. Grinding. Hustling, grinding, beating people up if need be. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been hearing, just to start the show off, mate, that I've been hearing the kids want deep fried, mate. Mm-hmm. That's what they've been chanting for the rooftops. They have, mate. So I think we could get a wee announcement at the start of the show, just a sort of rough idea of what our plans are. You take it away, brother. I'll take I'll take it away, mate. I'll take it away and shine it re- up real nice, baby. Um, so the kids are wanting deep fried, mate. Yeah. So we're gonna give them it, baby. So guys, we've been talking about Patreon for a wee while, just a small time, and we've decided that we're gonna start it soon. It's coming soon. Don't know exactly yet, but it's coming soon. But the plan is for all our deep fried lovers. 
there's going to be it's so much more deep fried content. You're going to get an extra, whole extra episode of deep fried a month. And probably more we things, watch alongs for deep fried. So like the documentaries and stuff that we watch for the topics, we're going to record ourselves sort of reacting to them, watching along. You'll see the documentary, it'll go back to us. It's going to be beautiful. It's stuff we cannot do on YouTube, copywriting it. Aye. And it'll be like... It would be like you're watching something that's kind of... Because we've been watching these things and they're heavy educational and that, mm-hmm. but they're not pure, like, funny and that. Like, Aye. Not pure, like, no good charisma like us and that, no, know what no, I mean? No, so no. you'll be watching that with us there and all. Aye. For it's that. For, for that For that added charm. But, I so... That's coming, man. An extra deep fried a month. Watch alongs with like documentaries and that we watch, or even we're going to do more stuff with that watch alongs. You're going to get that. You're going to get guest suggestions. So, like, if you suggest them on Patreon, we're going to try to get them on. It's no a case of like, nah, fuck that. If you suggest them, we're going to try to get them on. And also, deep fried topic. You get to suggest a deep fried topic, and we need to do it at some point in the future. If you it's just, a, it's if you, a certainty. It's a nailed on cert. And if you just wanted to annoy us, you could just have like, because we watch Enton, MD Tells us to. Aye. Do you know what I mean? They could just say the war for tours, mm-hmm. and we just need to do that and try and, <laughs> ma- try and make it entertaining. We just need to try and pump that content out, bro, <laughs> somehow. But we will do it for the Patreon people. And also, you will get the episodes ad free. So you can just watch it. Plain sailing, man. No interruptions, no nothing. And also, man, just in general, if you've been liking us, you want to just support us because the more support we get, the more we can do. You know what I mean? The more time we'll have to do things, the more things will open up to us and become available. So if you just want to fucking show support to the podcast, you've been enjoying it, you like what we do, then there's another reason to sign up for it. Aye. And if, if see, see them there, see that, that one right there. At the front? Aye. Mm-hmm. If they don't sign on, I'll, I'm, I'm away. I'm away. What? If they don't sign up for Patreon, I'm gone. Who? Uh, them right there? Aye. Because that, that's, that's the reason up, I'm doing this. cowboy. If he leaves, I'm leaving. And look, he's going all angry in that. <laughs> so you better fucking do it. All right. It's the only reason I'm doing it is for them, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the only reason he's here is for the people. So that's coming, Trips. So I just wanted that wee announcement to start of the month. Definitely some more deep fried content because the kids are wanting it, baby. That's simple. But other than that, we're back in, mate. What was the last time? But, sorry, I'm pure playing with your mate, wire here, mate. Last time. Oh. That's quite flirty. <laughs> that's pure flirty, man. Look at that. Pure twi- twiddling his wire. <laughs> And probably fucking the audio. Well, I feel like we're connected. No, I know. We'll just, we'll just what? kind of like each other. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> last time was a pure educational one. It's kind of gonna. I don't really. They're all educational, bro. I know, but I mean, like it was like hardcore. A lecture. I feel like mine's gonna be like that. Aye. So do you want to? Will we tell the people? Like, obviously, the tap suggestion last time. Aye. Was uh, that up there? That's uh, all the satanic kings and that. Oh, and so is. Disney films. I have been looking into it. I have took that that on myself. So um, it's been really interesting. I've, I've obviously, like, I'm not just sticking to that one thing. No, I'm no. not looking in. Went the extra mile for the troops, you know what I mean? Uh, Take we, as a top class podcaster, oh, yeah. you know what you need to do. You need to branch off and look <sighs> back. and You need to, you need to, I always say, you need to find yourself. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You always need to almost just go out into nature and find yourself, mate. Uh-huh. And so I just find it and just hoard it and just think, that is fucking beautiful, man. That is it. And that is it, man. See, I've always thought it as being like a wee baby that you nurture. Oh, aye, of course, feed and it. it. takes on its own wee paths oh, and stuff, but you're always... And then you're back there with it. Oh, you're right. It's 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 almost like the circle of life. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Because, you know, when we start the circle, guys, it can venture out. And you know, a circle just gets wider and wider as it goes up. But do you know what? See when it comes back round? It reaches the same point. Yeah, and that's what we call a circle. And that is education. Mm-hmm. But I, so you've been looking into that, and I have been looking into a tasty, tasty topic. Goodness me, salivating right now, brother. Um, or caught me if don't know what one. But, <laughs> um, mate, honestly, I've been looking into MK Ultra. Boom, oh. boom, boom. 
which is a sort of secret fucking programme, but we'll get into that later, man. That, that so, could be a f- about three podcasts, so probably. It probably will be about three podcasts. We're just going to talk about how we got to MKUltra and sort of what they set out today, and then maybe in the future we can revisit it, go into, as we always talk about the branches, people. You've got to nurture the tree, the branches grow, you get the fruit, yeah? That's just how it works in this, in this world of ours. That's how it is. But I man, so... But let's get into that later, mate. Uh, let's catch up. I've not seen you, mate. No seen you in a, in a good wee while, bro. Aye, it's been fucking happening. ages, bro. It's been happening. What you've been up to just work away in that. Working away, oh. bro, away. Mate, see, when I was working, but I'll tell you a wee story, right? See, the other day, and it was pure, like, stormy and that, right? Um, I was driving home, home for work, and my fucking uh, windscreen wiper just fell off, right? So I was like, oh, fuck, it was in my van. I was like, I need to go down to a Halfords and that and get it sorted. So I drove down to this Halford, right? And it was pure, like, what was it? Hurricane Donda or something? Was that? Donda? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was the Hurricane or something? Don- like that. Donda? Can you use more of it? <laughs> you can use more of the Hurricane. Reborn into a hurricane, man. Aye, could and be. that's a, a beautiful thing, mate. A powerful, powerful a force of nature. But <laughs> aye, so it was like, I went and got this fucking windscreen wiper, right? Went out to the van, and I was like, "Have you ever, have you put one of them on yourself?" Oh, I mate, but it's I, p- I pure so read in it. I it's like, no. I, I was like, Danny, hey, like depends what a- kind you've got in that, mate. Uh, I, well, this one, right? It came with like three wee parts, and I was like, wanted A, wanted B, wanted C. So universally, like when it comes to making IKEA furniture or playing with toys or whatever, A, B, and C means you do this and then this and then this, didn't it? But it wasn't. It was just. Right, so I went out and I was trying to do it with all these three wee bits and it wasn't working. I went back in and said to the guy, mate, come out and give a horn with us, right? And he's like, ah, no, no. Did he's you like, not ask? No, I was, I, I was like, eh, mate, can you please give me a oh, horn? That's, he's like, ah. that's good, that, as long as you get mad. I was like, ah, can, can you please give me a wee horn, please, mate? <laughs> and he's like, ah, no, it costs four quid. And I was like, I'm not paying you four quid to step outside and put something on like that. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a cheapskate. You should have said, mate, nothing right. Step outside and I'll take a square go for it. <laughs> Free of charge, mate. <laughs> I'll get you that for... No, <laughs> it'll cost you four quid. Aye, you that box with me, mate. Four quid, yeah. <laughs> uh, aye, so the guys that are on, I was like, fuck it. He goes, it's easy. He goes, see that one? You put that on, right? So it was the A, the A one. He's like, you put that on. I was like, right, sound. Bounced it. Went to do it again. And it just wasn't working. I felt like I was breaking it and all that, right? So I bounced back in. I done, mate, why? Come out and give a horn, hurry up. And he's like, no, four pounds, right? <laughs> and I what? went, I was at, now I was just annoyed at this guy at this point, right? I was just like, no, what, no. And I bounced back out and it was pure wet and windy that. And I was like, mate, <laughs> what that? And he goes, ah, for windy. <laughs> <laughs> four pounds, right? Four pounds, you wee prick. <laughs> and then like this lassie that worked there, like seeing that, and I could see her going, and then she walked to it. And she oh. was like, obviously, I help, come and help him, mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then she came out and she couldn't get it. That's how, like, it was, I think it was the elements that were fucking us. Ah, well, it will do, mate. Like aye. the, aye, the, the storm. Donda. Donda, the storm, aye. <laughs> and uh, so the, then that lassie was like, that's definitely how you're meant to do it, right? And then she done two weeks seconds, I'll go back in and just say to him. And I was like, right. And she went back in and I could see them like, arguing, right? <laughs> so no, I done. I got in my van and drove it up to the door. To, it was about that away from the door. <laughs> Just so that, like, the the electric doors opened and that. Really? That's I, a like, bold move, and, and, mate, I was raging. Right, now that way, it was after work. It was six o'clock. Oh, it was pitch black. You it was all raining. You never catch anybody in a lost mood with that coming <laughs> if you want, bro. Mate, I drove in between the two ballards or about that much away Aye. from the side of my van and drove right up to the door and the guy, the, the doors, like, opened in front of him <laughs> and he was like, you can't park here! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm no moving for here until you put that wiper blade on my motor, you know? And he goes... Oh, I've done that and fucking put it on. Took him two seconds and goes, right, just go, go. <laughs> oh my God, man. But Mate, you, you basically bullied a guy into uh, putting that on. Put that on. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like, am I the bad guy, aye? Uh, four pound, mate. You Mate. heard the man? <sighs> I don't know. I came into this podcast thinking... I was the voice of reason here. You were the victim? Aye, aye. <laughs> aye I was hitting like... The tables can turn quickly, bro. That's his life, man. Four quid's dear, but... Uh, but it's obviously they have a mad charge for coming. But he doesn't things. own Halfords, mate. He's not getting the four quid. Why not just be sound, bro? But aye. No, I get that. I he should look, 
if it was me, I'd have came out and helped you, mate. Of course you would have. But you're, a, you're a nice guy. Because I know you, I do a podcast with you. It, <laughs> <laughs> it would be heavy. Imagine bad, you're you know? e- Evan, come out and put this on. I'm like, ah, four pound, mate. <laughs> four quid, bro. Evan, come and help me with this podcast. Four pound, mate. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Nay less. That's your rate, I Nay mere. Four quid a <laughs> podcast. That's what we make, by the way. No far off it. But I mean, I think should he have helped you? I should you have reversed up to the doors? Drove up to the doors. That was a pretty reckless decision, bro. Oh, man. See, after say, <laughs> this is the that first time I've said it out loud, mate. <laughs> I wrote down in my notes, uh, Halford's job's <laughs> worth. From Halford's? <laughs> <laughs> Halford's job's worth. I wrote down in my notes thinking, that's what I need. And then when I was saying it there, I was mate, like, do you know what? look like a mad psycho. Aye. Big black van and all that, mate. No what? No what? I can get your frame of mind because... Rain, that, that that type of weather makes you heavy stressed out. I get why you were like that, mate, and I accept you for it, mate. Oh, that's it feels nice to be seen. Do you know how um, Genghis Khan? Do you know Genghis Khan? Aye. Or is it Genghis or Genghis? No, it's Genghis. Right, so see Genghis. Is Khan. I've got a bad, how, I've got a bad Genghis on my I've dick. Got a big, you get it out. <laughs> <laughs> but see, um, do you know how he <clears throat> trained his mad army? How? See if they were like four. They all had their own horses. And they, um, the people like grew up like riding horses, right? But see, like when they shoot arrows, they waited till they were like the horse was at his four feet were off the ground because they were like perfectly still for like a split second. And that was how they trained. Aye, that's how they go the arrow so perfect. Sure, I heard that in our podcast. I'm just robbing it. Aye, just that's right. the, We'll just know we start then, just taking all the best bits of other podcasts <laughs> and putting them in ours. Podcast highlights, <laughs> just, just everything. Aye. For your, Bit, take a bit of fucking James English, bit of open goal, just put it on one thing. Aye. Could do that. That'd be good. So what about the footballer? Eh? <laughs> 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 um, aye, so what's been happening? Um, so what about the footballer? <laughs> Imagine, imagine you've watched Open Goal and they're like, ah, so what about the football? Like, ah, ah, it's good, mate. Ah, ah, aye, mate. Well, actually, I love the football because there's a ball and there's fit and no, they're g- kicking and all that. No, but I love the football because it's on grass. Aye. And the grass Great is, point. Grass is good. That, imagine that's what Open Goal was. Man, I would, wa- I would fucking watch I would, that as well. Mate, I would love that so much, man, if it was just the boys we could do, goal. We could do like, um, like something, what's the opposite of Open Goal? Like closed... Closed. What's the opposite of goal? You kind of get, you kind of get an opposite of goal. Well, what's you? the opposite of goal in the sense of like the goals in your life? Failure, maybe. Closed, closed failure. failures. <laughs> that should be what the name of this podcast is, bro. <laughs> the closed failures. <laughs> With your host. Have closed. you fa- have you failed in life? Start a podcast. <laughs> but mate, talking about failing in life, man. I used to work with a guy. Eh, can't know, he's no failing in life. He might listen to this. Probably no. But. I remember, mate, just a random story. I remember the other day. It's not, it's not a great story, mate, but I just thought, I thought it was funny, right? Like, the, the thought process behind this, right? So I remember I started in the railway, right? right. Me and this boy, Chris, um, who who loved motors. Like dra- He loved driving very fast, mate. Ah, strange. I, I just... Never go there. But, but the thing is, he knew when I was in a motor or a van with him that I hated that. Like, like he, was, he would drive... He would drive like, he would, cause I hated it. He would, he would like, <laughs> and drive faster to, like, he would drive to a point, he was just trying to get that bite out me, like, pure, mate, that's, what are you doing? That's mad. That's how people die, mate. That's what I was trying to explain to him. I was like, this is funny, right? You're also going 95 mile an hour on a 30, mate. Like, chill out, mate. Aye. We're about to get the fucking, the coppers. Aye. But, mate, this young man I started in, in the railway room, and, I remember, mate, it hadn't started long, and it was always a thing, like, pure, see if, like, oh, you want to drive out to this site and pick up a couple of things and that, you're always like, ah, yes, man, we sky by. <laughs> so, I remember we got in the van, right? Like, it, my boss came in the canteen, and he's like, ah. Right, who knows where uh, Greenfields is, right? And Chris like, ah, me, I know, I know, mate, aye, aye. He's like, you sure? 100% mate, aye, I know, I know, aye. Aye, you just go for, aye, 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 it's near there, aye, aye, aye. So... We, he's like, uh, Evan, you go away, and fuck it. So we go in this pickup, right? And we start driving it, and he's booting it and that. And I'm like, ah, fuck's sake, <laughs> right? And he, and he just starts heading like a direction, right? And I'm like, ah, just sitting. We've been driving for about 10 minutes, right? And he's like, ah, um, I said, I don't even know where this is. Greenfields, never even heard it. And he done, ah, me neither, mate. And I was like, ah, so where are you going the noon? He's like, ah, 
uh, I'm just driving to a place called Green House because it must be near there. And I was oh. like, I don't think that's how geography works, bro. Mate, that's a mad, um, that's a mad head to have in it. Like a <laughs> Mate, mad aye, that's way what I'm to saying. make a correlation. The thought process, like, right, if I just, I mean, that's called green and that's called green. If I just head in that direction, it'll be somewhere there. Aye, like Black Hill's always near night time. Aye, aye, but so like, uh, and the name must mean it's close to each it's, other, uh, which was a crazy thought process. It's I thought. next to Shelton, if you're wondering. Well, Greenfield. Is it? Aye. Maybe that's where we ended up, mate. Aye. Must have been. Or we ended up in Green Hills, I can't remember. <laughs> Green but, Hills just running about asking for shit. But he used to, I mean, he used to, um, he honestly used to just drive very, very fast and watch I, me kind of go, what are you doing, mate? I kind of do that with him, man. Right, Dana. Do you, yeah? I put that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dana, but I don't know why I do it. It's just because it's Joseph. I just know it, like, kind of unnerves him. So you and say it, that is a mad thought. Well, that was about the geography, I, I suppose. Was, no, the driving. I don't like people that, like, I drive fast if I'm wanting to get somewhere fast. Mm -hmm. But then if I'm with Joseph, I kind of do that thing you said. Mate, but he used to like, so, mate, the Christmas, so we, we worked in uh, like Bishy, right? So, like, uh, Bishop Briggs, yeah? Yeah. Uh, if you don't know. The mighty Bishy. <laughs> if you don't know, get to know, yeah. Bishy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great but, part of but, the city. But we worked there, and now the mad retail part that's got the Nike outlet and that, ah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, like, Boxing Day, and we used to get, like, we didn't need to work, but they were, like, we'll give you... 400 quid to just turn up that day, right? Per day Aye, during the holidays. Aye, it's stupid money, mate. Because, like, during the day holidays, it's like that's when they can get on the track most because there's not as many trains running, Aye. or you know what I mean? Or trains are off, like, like Christmas Day and New Year's Day, and that, like, it's just everybody's in 12. Is that, 12 is that why, like, night shifts mad then? I know, like, railways, I've always been, like, I know people that they, like, work with me through the week Aye. on a site or whatever. And then they go and do shifts on the railway. Aye, mate, you can just night. do like t you can. It's weird. It's a weird thing, mate. It's because it's mostly night shift. It's, it's a kind I, of wasn't I wasn't night shift, though. I was day shift. It's a weird. mythical thing. You mean? Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a mythical. On the the railway is a bit of a mafia <laughs> thing, mate. A bit. Of, oh, you're in a railway, bro. Aye, fucking aye. Is real, that? Dude, railway man, him. I no, didn't know that. Aye, mate. nobody's ever said that about me, mate. <laughs> but mate, see. It was a fucking Boxing Day sales, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, why did I... It, it was deeds, like, we weren't even doing it, I don't think. And he was like, ah, why I go down... Why I go down and uh, go to the, the sales at that we... The Nike uh, and that. Mate, and it was snowing, right? And he's like, ah, <laughs> pure driving, right? And see the back roads, like... Aye, at Torrance, no? Aye, mate, aye. driving up there, pure skidding round corners, no, that, mate? It was going up and it's side and shit. But the mayor, I was like, mate, what are you doing? He... He thought it was even funnier and funnier, and I was like, you, I'm going to die in this motor with this boy, and nobody's going to know. And there's, like, nothing you can do with it. <laughs> just the passenger just like, please stop. Please. I, no, I never got to that stage, but. I, but <laughs> Mate, that's what he wants. That's when Jinky would stop then, or Jinky would, like, I could purposely crash then. I think he'd have fucking had sex with himself if I started doing that. Mate, honestly, I was really excited by how scared I was <laughs> with, with so the whole experience. That's weird, isn't it? Ah, it's very weird. <laughs> Getting excited about it's here, too. Um, that's a psycho. So, there's a boy in my work that was what I tell you about. I kind of told you a wee bit before, and you were like, every time I go to tell Evan something interesting, he goes, save it. <laughs> Yeah. Save it for the podcast. Save it, baby. <laughs> so I so a boy in my new work, right? He's uh told me this story. It's tragic, right? But no well like on the deep fried we talk about the acid and that, talk mm -hmm. about the mushies and that, you know what I mean, DMT or that gear, right? He had this experience. So just so that that's this is what I'm this is <laughs> I'm prefacing that because I'm about to say something. Right. That's you might think that doesn't this is this shouldn't be on a deep fried, right? But he nearly died. He broke his back, his spine, his neck, like hun all the hunters and hunters of bones, and he was like unconscious for like ten minutes and that, and a car crash and a wind farm, right? Motor clattered into him. The van, I don't know if it went to a picture of the van, but it's like it was fully wiped off, like the side. The, the driver's side of the van was like t taking off. It was as if it was sawed. You Fuck could see it. inside the back of it and all that. It's mad, but he showed me like his injuries and stuff. But I was talking to him and I was like, what? Like, and it might sound <coughs> daft, but what was that like? And he was going, see, when I was in the helicopter and that, it was like, he was going to helicopter getting hang with it. It was like, I just, I was seeing colours and I was in another planet and that. And he's like, talk about shit like this, right? And I had recently taken DMT right. and it was heavy. The things he was describing were actual similar to that. How mad's mm. that? Maybe like, 
maybe he died for a minute, eh? Aye, that's and, like, what I'm thinking. He died for a minute, and like, what happens when you... Maybe like when you die, every bit of that in your brain just releases, man. And just And you just... But, but mate, imagine, right? Imagine this is what happened, right? Imagine you had that much... We didn't know, but we had that much... D, we could produce that much DMT that when you died, you were still, like, tripping. But you were dead. But, like, it, it, you tripped about, like, ha- heaven or that. And because of, like, your conscience that you carried through with you. And that's how people, like... Or if you were good, then you get to go to heaven. Or if you were right, bad, right, right. so like you basically like if you've done a lot of bad things in your life, when you die, all that DMT releases is like a bad dream, and that's a what bad hell is. Aye. And then if you've done all good shit, and you're like, oh, I've had a great life, and I was a nice person, and that you trip heaven, and it's all in the things you like, and that, and that's because that's basically what heaven and hell is, and it? it's like you're saying that's where the idea of that came maybe, from. Maybe like that could like that's a logical, more logical thing than. And then your spirit rises and you go float into the sky and That's you're, like you're sub- grand as hell and you're like, no way grand, ah. And then he bulgy popped up here. <laughs> <laughs> He's you, like, you own every night, grand, ah. He's like, ah, we don't, we don't have sex with people up it's here. Heaven. It's an eternal bless. No, oh, what? What? You grand, ah, mine, foxy. Listen, Evan, we don't do that up here. Just, um, like, come on, I'll let, I'll introduce you to <laughs> St. Peter. No, mate. I'm at my home, mate. Wait, mate, I've been dead for about three hours now, mate. I'm joking. But <laughs> <laughs> aye, but, um, aye, so he was saying, like, see when he, he like, has a wee lassie and all that, and he was like, oh, he was just thinking about that, and he had, like, a mad ego death, practically. Like, mm. he's no been the same since. And, mate, it was like, a year ago, and he's, like, cutting about and whatnot, like, fully recovered, lifting shit up and all that. How mad's that? It's so, like that's, they, the, that's the Lord right there. Mate. They, they said to him like, "If you have got a God, start praying or something." Said something like that or Aye. something, something religious and daft. I heard a, <laughs> I heard a good um, we hang about like it's a it's a famous saying. It's like kind of what you're saying. It's like there's nay there's nay atheists on a sinking ship. Ah, you get what I mean. Ah, I like it. Because if the ship's sinking, your your last hope is. Like a higher power, you Aye. know what I mean. So it's like a wee. It's like people don't believe in that shit until they need it. You know Aye. what I mean, and then they try it. I'd be I've like tried that. that a few times, bro. I'd be going doing like that, mate. So I would. I'm like, yeah, I'd be like that. Fuck, he's all. What is that? He's going doing his signal. Homer Simpson's a fucking legend, bro. A legend of the game. We brother. were talking about Homer Simpson on a deep fried, I think. I were. I any any friend, friend of, of mine is a friend of mine. <laughs> What Mate, a legend. What was the. Uh, you were talking about him in an advert, I know. Troy McClure. <laughs> Aye, <laughs> I am Troy McClure. Welcome to the Simpsons podcast. <laughs> Mate, I'm a geeky podcast. It's like all your Simpsons trivia. Episode 217 in Comic Book Man. <laughs> You'll notice he has pink shorts in this episode. Again. Sweet. <laughs> he has pink shorts in this episode. He normally has purple shorts. And it's a, it's a pretty nifty thing. This is this is to commemorate the writer James Arl Johnson, <laughs> who loved pink shorts. <laughs> who loved pink shorts? <laughs> she was a bit he more, bit more poetry in that. And it, <laughs> <laughs> that he loved pink shorts. Shorts. That's a it. Eat my shorts, as Bart would say. What a legendary quote, bro! What mm-hmm. a fucking legendary quote that is, man. But um, look, mate, should we get into the the deep friedness? No, I was going to say... Um, oh, wait, wait, aye, aye, I was going to say. I've mate, got here, in fact, mate, no no way. Guess what my pal done at the weekend, mate? What? Sold a mad old guy edibles, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man, I'm fucking mad at it. Right, I know what you're doing here. What? You're wanting me to tell the story about what my poor old papa did, right? So this is a text trips for Madre. My Madre says, Papa had an edible cake last night and was up tripping till 2.30am, full laughing faces. He paid £30 for them, thought they would help his sore back, bought them from the man shed, and he couldn't walk. So the man shed, you were, you were curious about a bunch about of that. drug dealers or something? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, do you know what it is? It's like just a mad club for old guys now, like women have like mad sewing clubs and all that. With drug dealers in it, mate? Why, uh, do you explain this, mate? You ever been to the bingo? <laughs> no, no mate actually haven't they as a lot go down aye mate it's shady stuff for the gear at the bingo shady stuff goes down house you fucking bam <laughs> <laughs> what number what number was that she's just shouting number 11 two big fat lines <laughs> <laughs> it was happening black out there about two minutes what number did she shout there 
<laughs> Take my books and out of the Yeah, what's that, Gory? I'll keep, I'll keep um, it back in. Aye, so Manshed is... Uh, cause, see, because it's in Springburn, there must be like we all guys. It's like, yeah... My boy books, he's not, not brilliant, nah. Nah. but my papa's pure no like that. Like, he's like a wee... Like, he doesn't you know, drink, man. He did, I, like, obviously it's Joseph's grand and all, so he doesn't drink, he doesn't... What's he like? He's like a wee whittler and all that. Like, he makes wee men out Whittled. of wood. Whittler? We, we, like, what do you call that? Like, we gnome people out of wood and that. A magician, bro. That's <laughs> what you call that, bro. Like, makes gnomes out of wood. <laughs> a whittler, that's a good a thing. A whittler. Um... Aye, and he was pure tripping out, so he was. Thought it would help his sore back. But not my favourite. Do you know hand. what he's went and done? Wait, I've not me. told you about this. He's went, so it was three cakes he bought, right? Like big oh. like that. He, he ate the full one, mate. Imagine that. And my mum's like, they were reeking, like stinking, <laughs> mate. And he's just munched the whole thing. He's like, that's nice, not that. Kept going. I'm quite herb, all that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's had two left, obviously, because he, he didn't enjoy it. And he's tried to take them back. I was like, that doesn't work, nah, Papa. Nah. Give me them. So, mate, I'm still confused. Like, who gave them them? The men shared them and whatever. <laughs> no, but, but why are they good to go edibles, bro? Mate, it wouldn't be the institution. It would just be a wee guy there that's like... Selling edibles to old guys? I. it's probably... <laughs> <laughs> it's just, mate, you're like, this is such a no. You're like, mate, it's a fucking man shed. Man <laughs> shed, Evan. <laughs> what, but who? <laughs> <laughs> what man in the shed? Right, so this is a shed. Right. We're we, like, we men in it. Aye. Right. <laughs> but it's animals. like overage pensioners, but there'll be one overage pensioner that like just likes getting baked. Is there, is there something up with that? Or do you not get that in canvas slang? No. No. <laughs> no, we actually don't. Do you mate. not get old? No, I know him. No, see, I think that's an mate. Like, see, the, like one of the first times when we used to go all go to gaffs. Not, I went to gaff in Milton, right? This night ended, and it was me, my pal Scofy, and my pal Mick Foy. Mm-hmm. And this night ended where I was getting chased out the flat with hatchets. Nah, right? Being serious. <laughs> Success. Milton's, <laughs> Milton's like proper Aye. back in the day shit, Aye. man. Like some parts of it, but. That the lassie that Susit was was like walking about with banana bread, and she was like, "This is my mum's banana bread. She's why I try some." I was like, "I, I definitely started munching it now," uh-huh. and I was like, "And there's a picture of me like this." It <laughs> <laughs> pure canny move, and I get fucking chased out a mountain with hatchets, man. But um, how did it go for that? To just somebody wanted. Oh, there was a bag at the door, right? And my pal, it was a boy I knew from school for Milton. Somebody looking for the banana bread. <laughs> <laughs> the bag at the door. Uh, my was, banana bread in there! I got the boys for a men's shed in there. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, like, there's cunts banging the door and they all had big things doing that, right? And then my pal opened the door and goes, ah, here, here, they're no in this, they're no part of this, let them leave that. Aye. And all that, right, cheers, and all that. And what, let them leave that? Like, pure and dinny, what, let us go. And then I presume they just went in and started fucking gone each other, know what I mean? Or I don't know if they were like recruiting members like now like the Warriors that, or something. Is that an initiation? You, uh, were, you were actually at an initiation ceremony? Aye, we did, I had to sacrifice a wee pig and all. <laughs> Fuck it mate, things need to be done. I was baked at my heart. <laughs> Imagine, get, you got the Jew, you're like, I was baked bro. <laughs> nah mate, here listen, you ever had that banana bread to the man shed? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we'll, we'll need to jump down the man shed for a podcast. I know, mate. Now nah, we trip out to the man shed. Cut that, cut that brownies. Uh-huh. Jamie. Evan. Guess where I was where were yesterday, you? mate. Yesterday. Where were you? I was down for that moist, moist experience with young Campbell. Oh, you lucky man. Oh, baby, baby boy. Um, I was down there, man, and he was cutting my hair. <laughs> he was <laughs> he was cutting my locks, man, and I really did need it. Maybe if you watch the past few episodes, I have had a hat on. It's been horrible to look at. It's I've been hated vile, it. mate. I honestly hate it so I, much. See when Evan's hair gets like over a fade kind of length, it's, it starts like goes all white and weird and uh, maggots. And I'm maggots and a couple of leeches, and I'm sure there's a few leeches listening to us doing fuck you leeches. But. Um, but we even talk, going to talk about that, mate. Miles and Co. Miles and Co. <laughs> Miles best and barbers Co. in town. The best barbers in the town. I was down there getting that moist experience off young Campbell. And uh, he actually kept the shop open late for me. And that's the kind of customer service you get down at Miles and Co. I was down there, man, and he was playing. Do you know what he played for me? Obviously, young Campbell's a man, surprisingly enough, from Campbell Town. No, he's not. So he's actually, it's weird, right? Because he's actually the mayor. Of Campbell Town? He named it. It's his town, mate. So he was, I was in there, I was in the hot seat and I was getting a zzz and 
he was actually playing some Highland techno for me. No way. Legit, <laughs> mate, legit. Like it was uh, it was mad, mate. Aye, because um, because I think you know Campbelltown and that. I think they're right into their wee Kayleys and they're, just, they're very right. Scottish, you know, apart from, we're very unpatriotic. They're sweet Scottish dances. They know we? the dances and that. So he was playing some Highland techno for me and surprisingly good, mate. It's a very, it's a unique blend, I would say. Mm-hmm. But it works, it works. Um, <laughs> aye, but aye, if you need a haircut, uh, if you don't want to just go down and get that experience, Get yourself down there. Miles and Co. The best in the city. As, as, oh, as, as. <laughs> <laughs> as, as. What, how the fuck did you say that? And as. I as I have always said. <laughs> did you say as that? As I've always said. I've been trying to say that. Right. I usually go down there just for a wee um, hang about. Uh-huh. Just get a, a can of juice, a wee beer, maybe a cup of tea and just talk to the boys. I've not seen any of my pals in ages. I come here. And then I leave here, go straight to Mills and go and just sit with the trips. Is that the hot spot? Aye, mate, it's the best place to be, man. So even if you don't want a haircut, bounce down there, give them my score. Mate, them actually, right mate, it's actually, I don't mean to call you in the podcast. I remember I was driving by there the other day and you were wolf whistling a couple of, a couple of old big yeah, guys. A couple of old big guys, man. Aye, they were huge, but did you see them? Aye, I they bet they you were wanted big. to wolf whistle them, but you just didn't. Do you know what it was? I rolled in the windy today and you were right there uh, doing the wolf whistle, man. But that's a beautiful, beautiful thing and nobody should ever do it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> if you need that haircut, 261, Miles and Co, go in, mention Riley's Gaff. If you're booking in the books app, mention Riley's Gaff in the notes, type it. Easy peasy. Even if you spell it wrong, they'll probably know what you're talking about, man. So, um, dyslexic people, do not worry. Do not worry about that. I have seen a few, sorry, just, I know it's a long advert. I have seen a few um, searches on our analytics. It's like searches that find you. And Somebody it's like wrote, R-I-L-E-E-Y, yes. <laughs> Wy- <laughs> Wiley's bath somebody wrote. And I was like, oh, what the fuck's going on, man? That guy needs some help. It was what is he, Wiley co- co- Coyote in a bath? <laughs> it could have been, mate. could have been, or it could have been a grave, grave error, mistake. But get yourself down there, guys. Cheers. Uh, are you a local drug dealer? Well, you should really stop that and do something ethical with your life, young man. Uh, if you want to switch over to the the good side, the legal side, and but you've got that entrepreneurial mindset, yeah? Then get yourself in contact with the man, with the plan, Scott McClure. Scott McClure's coming in hot 2022, that's what he said to me. All right. He's coming in hot and hard. Um, and he's gone. He's ready to drive those sales home, baby. Uh, he's purchased a new golf driver, and he's ready to drive your sales down the fairway. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. How you getting on, young man? You alright? Say something about Scott McClure e Commerce. Scott McClure e-commerce is a man that got me for e-commerce and e-commerce. <laughs> <laughs> moved him up a whole letter. I decided to phone Scott and he started with it. Right, cheers, bro. See you later. What's he e-commerce? Eh, go and, go and find it. Scott McClure. Get in touch with Scott McClure and he'll tell you. Yep, get in touch with Scott McClure and he'll tell you. Right, mate? Right, see you later, boys. Right, right. Bye. The year 2022, people, is the year that we start the business, yeah? It's the year that Scott McClure takes us home into that high life, yeah? You could be di- you could be living above miles and go think about that, baby. You could be in that West End and you could be doing a lot of things with your life, drinking a lot of coffee, going a lot of nice walks and stuff. So if, you, if you've got a wee business idea, even if, like, we are saying, like, even if you're just, like, a self-employed guy who's, like, maybe a fucking electrician or something, maybe, aye, I don't know, like, aye. starting your own. If you want to validate your business, you want to get on the right path, Get in touch with Scott. He's got one program. It's a mentorship program um, that's going to take you for no having a business at all to having a business set up within 90 days. So if you've got something you make, something we things you produce, you can sew, you can maybe do cartwheels or something, I don't know. Get in touch with Scott McClure. Um, and he's got a second program as well, which is for like, if you've already got your business set up, um, he's going to enhance it s- somehow. Whatever way you want, he's going to do it. So... As always with Riley's gaff, what do they get, Jamie? They get Budo Aff. They get Budo Aff. What's going to happen is you're going to go on a wee call with Scott. He's going to say, right, I mean, because really you could just sign up and then no be, no be the right fit, I'm afraid. You could really, I mean, say you're a guy who, you know. Like, it, say I'm a, I'm a young drug dealer. Aye. Say right. you phone up Scott, aye. Just say that. I'm not that, right? Aye, but I'm, just for... 
allegedly. Right, so say I'm I'm selling brown, white and green on the daily, right? Right. And I want to make it El Chapo style, you know what I mean? He he does not do that, Would he not do it? No. That is the type of people we want to get a voice and get them in the jail. So if you've got a legal business you want to start up, get in touch with a man. All his stuff's in the description. 20% off for Ellie's gaff. What more could you want, people? C O L twenty six. I'm going done packing up some bricks. Way a twix. And a stick. Chilling watching Netflix. Woo! And that is really some rap, 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 rippity roo roo there. And what that is, we're actually rapping about a thing that's very close to our hearts called Collection 26. The best hoodies that are kicking about. And the hoodies actually day kick about. You might see a hoodie actually walking itself Aye. Uh, down the street. They've which co- is collaborated with the robotics business. They've they? collaborated with Boston Dynamics. Yep. We've now got Collection 26 hoodie robots, which is a mad, mad thing. But hey, it's 2022. What can we expect? You know, nothing's a surprise, you know, be anymore. Be tolerant. It re- be tolerant, be accepting if you see that hoodie. Um, but if you want just a regular hoodie, you know, the robot one, you want a t shirt, you want a hat, you want a, a rucksack. Ooh. And what, what's the difference between a rucksack and a backpack? Is it just two? Is there uh, one, like a European one? Aye, ruck, because he- the rucksack's heavy good at scram. All oh, right. Like the robot version. Is so the rucksack for Ruck Hill? Aye, aye. Heavy, heavy good boxer. At scram. Aye. Aye. There, aye. There you go, people. So, nay rucksacks, but we've got backpacks. Um, so, go, go on to the website. Use our code Riley's Gaff for some money off, as per usual. It really is starting to become the norm around these these sort of parts. So he's got new stuff coming out, which you'll see us in probably next week. Um, some stuff coming out later in March, I think. So keep an eye out, guys. But the website, that's in the description. Go visit them. Buy a hoodie. You'll get money off. Put discount code Riley's Gaff for your money off. Beautiful. Go support the show, guys. Send us money and kill all your friends. But hey, mate, look, we better get to business, I think. Let's get down to business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we want to start with, Jamie? Do you think? Um, we could start with, the, obviously, the most, like, comment was... Aye, aye, let's go with that. Disney thing, we could go with that, right? So, so take it away, sir. Um, I can just sit back. You can just sit back and relax. This is um, this is going to be a bit of a master class in podcasting for me. You might not want to go after me or how that way. Like, yeah, I'm if like you were on before, like why? Michael Jackson, you just wouldn't go on that. But no, I, I will. I get, I get you, I get you. Because it's well, who would I get you? Because it's more like a comedy thing, and it's like, aye, aye. If you like, because I was like, who would be going on after Michael Jackson? Like, aye. I know that's the true. Co- the cool down act. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Carr <laughs> <laughs> um, Rylan I sorry I wanted <laughs> Rylan I wanted to talk about This is Walt Disney Right What do you What do you think When When you hear the name Walt Disney I think theme parts baby I think Mickey Mouse You think I think princesses The man of a thousand stories Oh yeah Endless. A creative mind. Would you ever think he was a bad guy in any way? You wouldn't. No. (laughs) No. Of course you wouldn't. No. (laughs) Y'all don't say that. Well, he was a bit of a bad guy. In some cases, in some ways, he was a bit of a bad guy. He could just be a guy of his time. Right. Aye, aye. When was it? Wait, wait, like when he was like okay. fucking fifties or something. Twenties or something. Twenties. Mate, he died that in fact? like nineteen sixty something. Nineteen sixty seven or something. True. So. The Disney's been gone. Oh, it was. Yeah. I mean, I think like because they made like World War One propaganda and all that, so mm. they did like World War Two propaganda for like <laughs> it's like uh, soldier training. It was like Donald Duck, like right boys, we gotta get the gun. No, There's no, always I mean. mad, mad trippy Disney shit. Isn't there? Oh, I, I, I don't like all that shit. See the it's, pure uh, old school stuff. Hip, it's a bit like, hectic. I was gonna ask Joseph to bring up like the pure, the, the classic. Um, I thought he was just shaking. his head like, nah, mate. <laughs> no, mate. It can't be done. I'm sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> Sorry, mate. bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, mate. Um, the Steamboat Willie thing, like the pure <laughs> original cartoon. Now he's like. Ah. <laughs> Like Mickey Mouse, uh, have you yeah. seen that? No, no? I, I, I think I have. I, 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 I'm not, I can't picture it though. <laughs> it was like the first ever like cartoon ever, and that's what made him be able to have an animation studio because that was the first cartoon to ever link audio. So now he's like, <laughs> uh, 
a little linked audio with the with the video, if you know what I mean, uh, with the animation. That was the first to ever do that. So I think it's still like for its time the most like Steamboat Willie. Like the classic. I don't like shit like this. Like, I didn't even want. I've seen that a lot, uh, mate. So that's like this can just be like this is Walt Disney's first creation. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was an animator or anything. He what was he? <coughs> the director? He was a producer. Uh, I think he was a bit like. Young Joe boy are there. So what he was mer- like, what would he, like, did he create these things? Right, so he was like a heavy, he was like how, him and his brother Roy, you ever right. hear about him? Because no. he swallowed him in the womb. Can I <laughs> imagine that? How did he get a name then? <laughs> <laughs> it was just all one scratch. Back me day, mate, used to name him in the womb, bro. <laughs> um, as soon as you knew you were pregnant, had to get the name it. Charles Walt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, aye, so they were like animators when you're younger, and they were like, I think that it, all the shit you read's just like they had a shoestring budget and they aye. made short wee things to make a wee bit of money, and then they made that, and then I think that that made them like so much like see the gross off that like mm-hmm. the the actual money. I don't know if Joseph can maybe find out actual facts after that, but like. <laughs> Like the the money made after that just Steamboat Willie thing, like because that made Disney what it is. Like Aye. that made them. Be so that was like the kickstart Aye. of everything. Aye, that was like the. Is that meant to be Mickey Mouse though? Aye, that is Mickey Mouse. Aye, but no, why is it called Steamboat Willie? Mickey Mouse is a thing. Like that's. Aye, mate, it was originally called. Um, it was originally called Mon- uh, Montgomery Mouse. And I think that he didn't have a name in that, but that Montgomery Burns wouldn't be happy about that. He's a few existed. He is probably that old, man. Probably the did. same age. But um, so you think about well, is that it right? Was paid five hundred pound a week for it. That's how that's how long. inflation. The inflation, mate. Did that inflation, know. and we'll just say inflation, mate. Did that inflation, mate. Inflation, I'd say. Aye, I would try inflation, mate. So you like inflating a balloon? Aye, the I O N it then, bro. Inflation. <laughs> <laughs> like that, mate. That's a bit of inflation. Cut to Jamie's stomach there. That's that. Oh. That's that Za coming back to me, man. <laughs> that's that Zaza been smoking. <laughs> ZZ Top, brother. Maybe <laughs> seven grand or something. Seven G's a week, baby. It's all right, isn't it? Nice. But but that's what made him be able to be the anti-Semitic arsehole that he is to the, is to the day that I die. So I was just kind of reading this stuff up, right? And, like, obviously you've got, like, your hidden messages in Disney What you think, like, why would they even do that? Like, why would they go about that? Apparently he was, he was, like, he had ulterior motive to some of these things. Like, he was a 33-stage mason and stuff. Oh. Like, and it's, he was heavily affiliated with, like, Scottish high, high-ranked high masons, obviously. Cause really? At the time, aye, because at the time it was, like, like being a mason's a Scottish thing. Aye. So he was a, a 33rd-degree Freemason, mm-hmm. which is, like, if you, if a Scottish write something made outstanding contribution to society, that, that gets, like, bestowed upon them. So I, I think maybe the mason said to him here, you're some boy, love this shit you're doing. Love all these wee mouses. Love the content. Love it, bro. Just keep it coming. Have you got a Patreon? He's like, no. He's like, right, well, do you want to be a third three <laughs> Right, so that was, there was a lot of that in his, um, in his programs and uh, in his programs and his films. Like, he had just slipped wee subliminal, like, 33s or, like, the wee, do you know how the Mason badge, it's like that? Like, uh-huh, the wee uh-huh. triangle with the other one under it and stuff. So, um, that's, like, kind of surface level what. Walt Disney Aye. was like, right? But not a nice guy. Well, see, and that and they were just seems all right. Like mm. a, a Freemason, like uh, Connor Riley was nearly one. No, I mean it's not <laughs> that he's a great bad. Guy. <laughs> but um, but then he was also he, he did a lot of like uh, anti like Nazi propaganda and stuff for the World War. So he right. did like animations of like Donald Duck, like fucking being a soldier and learning how to use a gun and all that and Aye. it was like and then he did ones on like pay your taxes because that would fund the war somehow Aye. do you know what i mean Mate, like, it's mad how they like can use something so innocent as a cartoon to send out such important messages i i because it's like they kind of knew even back then like they know they knew that like i think that's maybe the reason why do you know how you get like the kind of sat- satirical comedians talking about like 
at being anti Tory and stuff. Aye. They know that like comedy and like frivolousness is like a tool. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? To, like uh -huh. it's, it's good, just as much merit as being serious because people listen to it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably what they were thinking with that. I like like their their um, comedians are just like laying. Comedians almost just tell the truth about society and lay it out in a funny way. But Aye. when you actually listen to what they're saying. It's fact, sort aye, of. You know take what I mean? away the punchlines, and it's like it's, it's really actually what's happening. Aye. So, um, aye. So he did do that, right? But then he also there was like there's a weird thing about him. He, he was part of the German American Bund. Bunda Society. Bunda Society. Right? <laughs> it was like a Nazi group. I'll give you some direct quotes, right? So he was, he was seen as that's Pre Walt, Walt, Walt Disney. I was just trying to see that. I think it's his brother. Oh no, so. It's Peter Fotis Kappenstun's Who's that? book, and it's about Hitler's doubles. It's called Hitler's Doubles. It's about like famous people that were Nazi sympathizers, if you know what I mean. Right, okay. Like right. back then. So he said that um, in the immediate years before we entered World War II, there was a small but fiercely loyal, I suppose legal, following of the Nazi party in America, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there were open meetings, anybody could attend. And this guy that was writing this book went to see, I was about to say, I went to see what was going on. <laughs> so this guy went to see what was happening for his cell, right? And um, he observed Walt Disney and Gunther Lesing, who was Disney's lawyer at the time. They were there every week. So there was other prominent Nazi affiliated so he's, Hollywood personalities. So he is a, a neo-Nazi. But he's really. making an anti-Nazi propaganda. I like was I that think. For, uh, <coughs> so, that for World War One. No, no, why wouldn't it be World War One? No, no I sorry, not neo Nazi. That means new, doesn't it? Uh, that means like aye, new age Nazi. But sorry, but see that group, the American German Bund, that is now the neo Nazi party. So that's what it, it that's used to be. Into that, aye. So um, fuck's sake. No, but he opposed a lot of like he was like a big capitalist and stuff, mm -hmm. right? So he was like, it was all about like kind of. Profits like and aye, aye, all that shit. So see the Nazi socialism stance, he didn't stand for that. Right. But it was all right with the anti Semitism. It was all right with the proper bad shit they were aye, up to. Aye. You know what I mean? He was like, Yeah. I could have, yeah. <laughs> I mean I Money but also hate the G. <laughs> <laughs> I mean kind of <laughs> unsure of where to stand here. Mate, it was um it, it was a it was a bad guy. Aye. It was a bad guy, as you can see. So, but that's like I, I think it's kind of weird that it's like a company that's like, as you said, obviously you're kind of joking. But when you were taught about Disney, you're like, oh, you think a fairy tale, aye, aye. And, that, and that's what. Well, that's what that's what like people who have never looked into it today with Disney think about it. So aye. the majority of people really and like and see because Disney are that like. Uh, like want you to think that want you to think they're good want you to walk down the the big castle street Aye. and like see all the pink buildings and all the kids having fun in that see like the parks and like even the way they treated their animators and stuff mm -hmm. back in the day it was like heavy bad mm -hmm. like because they wanted to keep up that so like do you know know how that Aye, way the you man, the, be it's just an image Aye, you want your image to be that pristine that Everything in the back needs to be a bit dodgy. No, I mean, aye, because like, how could it get to that level of pristine without it being dodgy? Aye, people exactly. working for fucking eighteen hours a day, barely getting paid, and having to come back in right next, like shit aye, like that, like pure exactly. terrible conditions. Heavy, heavy, bad, and like there was like back in like, Walt Disney's day when he was alive, still staying on him. Like he wanted to make a thing called um, Song of the South, which was like a cartoon that's like. Pure, it was a an full animated feature length film that was so racist, like so bad. Aye. And it was just like even the imagery and stuff, like it was really, really bad. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen like we, a wee snippets. Uh, I like I seen it the first time I ever heard about this. I seen like it was in a Jay Z video, mm -hmm. and I think he had a lyric about it or something. And it was like on genius, it kind of explained it. And I is was it like, no, the is it no, the mad, um, no, the birds. I'm not black. I'm OJ. Aye, OJ okay. Simpson it's, it's one. It's the mad hand guy walking. Could, is that that? that no, that's a that's a copy of that. That's what he's parodying. Because they're in like a field in that. Like, aye, that's like aye. um, aye, aye, like a like what that was really kind of thing. Aye. What is it? You know the type of cartoon that is. What it's was called? It? Uh, well, it was you got minstrel shows, which were obviously like black that was face, like real. But life. that was real. The, the animation like copied all this stuff. Like, see the white gloves and all that. Aye. Aye. Like, that's all Aye. it took for all the kind of like blackface things. Aye. Aye, so like these films, 
that's Joseph's take because he we spoke about this before and they had to always to remind me of that word so it's in minstrel films so that was like minstrel show I white actors would like uh, have the like have blackface but then like their white lips would still be shown and their white hands would still be shown I have definitely and then seen that cartoons like Disney cartoons a lot of them like you Mickey Mouse has got black arms and then big white gloves and Aye. stuff it's like imagery for that they kind of shows is still ah, like hanging still about there, for but them Needy takes no- notice it. Like, why is this fucking mouse wearing gloves <laughs> yeah, I know. all the time? I know. What is he hiding? Pause. Pause. Mm. Is he? A, is he a mouse? He's a, uh, of course he's not a mouse. He's got big circle wheels. Actually, doesn't look like anything like a mouse, doesn't he? No? That is actually very true. But maybe that's like the sort of uncanny valley thing where, like, Aye, they try even to- like, like. It looks sound because it doesn't actually look like it that much. Imagine but it, if it looked really like looked like a mouse. Have we had a pure pointed face. And we like, would not be caring about Walt Disney right now, mate. Like, ha ha. <laughs> that would be horrible. That would be terrifying. No wonder they don't do that. Big circle wheels and that. But aye, so there's obviously these other hidden messages like in... I don't, I don't know how much I believe these things. Like, mm-hmm. like there's plausible answers behind a lot of them. Like, right, there's, okay. one, there's one that, like, the Lion King, see when, like, Mufasa sits on the top rock, it's like, he sits down, and then it kind of pans out, and then dust forms a wee cloud that says S-E-X, and it's like, oh, that's sex for you. And then, like, the Disney people were like, oh, that actually says SFX, and it was like, I shout out to the animator special effects artist who worked hard on it or something. And I'm like... That sounds like bullshit to me, bro. (laughs) Aye, that sounds like more bullshit than it just seems sick. But these, the Disney who treat their animators, we just gave him a shout out, yeah? He's been what? Employee of the month. No, but it would have been the animator that animated that. He would never get away with that, bro. (laughs) No wonder Disney's reign. Get that change back to sex, wee man. (laughs) Get down to the dungeons. (laughs) Get down. But, um, aye, and then there was other ones, like, in the aerial, like, see the Little Mermaid? Have you seen the one of that? Like, on the front cover of the DVD or the video or whatever, see the mad castle that was, like, all golden and all that? Uh All the front of it's all just big bobbies, man. Aye! And the guy, the priest or something, has got, like, a boner in it? Oh, aye, aye, that's like, aye, like when the priest is like marrying one of them, he kind of does that with his trousers and he's got like a wee, oh. a wee hang comes up. So, aye, there is like, dinker. there's like sexual references and stuff in it, quite a lot of them, which is weird, mate, mm-hmm. for like a kid's uh, animator. That's studio. very much a kid's hang, man, as well, which is... It's strange, isn't it? it aye, it is, it is very weird, mate, like... Like, why would you want to be doing that? Aye. What is the purpose behind that? What are you getting out of that? What are you? What is the goal behind Aye. doing that? But the, the, there's, there's mere, there's mere weird shit, right? And I don't usually, <laughs> obviously, when we come on here, well, just your average conspiracy theorists usually, right? But see, when I hear like, oh, know how that Taylor Swift video, it's all got Illuminati things in it and that. <laughs> I'm like, why? Like, if the Illuminati are running everything, why would they, like, there's one of these that, it's like a ride in Disneyland that's got, like, stairs that I presume it's for, like, Temple of Doom or something, but they're green and it looks like a, like, the triangle thing. Aye. The, the triangle stairs, the pyramid stairs. And I'm like, why would that even be there? Like, what good's that then? Because the best way to hide is in plain sight. <laughs> but they didn't need to manufacture the stairs. To look like that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they could just be hiding. <laughs> I've seen like like obviously you see all the the you know your big A list celebs and that you know uh, hitting the triangle and that and it's just like I don't know man. Like if there is a big secret massive organization that don't want to be known about but they want to keep running things, like why would they get all these celebrities to make Aye. mad? Do you know what it is, mate? The react well. I don't know. Of course, I don't really know. I feel like what happens is when you become an artist, right, at that level, Rihanna, Justin Bieber, like that, this sort of level in that, right? Like, reference it. Like, imagine, right? So I think it's the Rihanna Umbrella video. I think it is that. And she's like that constantly. Run, like, that, run this town. Think how many mere views that's got just because people are like, 
look at the Satanism in this video and that because like that intrigues people like that people are like oh I need to investigate this Aye. and I need to, it's like a selling point mate like even, even if they don't like it like Aye. even if it's like Mad Moz like oh I need to go and see that like you Aye. get every demographic Aye, kinda... cause everybody wants a bit of Satan bro Aye. the day really that's the kind of sad truth here and if you if you've ever seen the video on YouTube and it's like the time I took fucking 30 acid or something and it's a guy smoking a fag and he's telling a story about like he accidentally took a full sheet of acid. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. That's, right, mate. Well, it's this guy, right? It's a pure famous YouTube video. It's like 12 years old, mate, right? We're just try to try find it. We can watch it. It's Well, it's on for a wee bit. He's telling a story about a guy said to him, like, oh, do you want to go on a ride or something? And it's, I don't know. He ended up taking a ridiculous a amount sheet? of I, I, like a full sheet of acid, right? And... He says he was fucking tripping out his balls and that, right? But then it's a class story and it's the guy seems heavy cool and that. I went on the guy's channel, right? And he's talking about Satanism, but he just seems like a not I mate, watch this video. I was working at this coffee shop back like 10 years ago on Mill Avenue in Tempe. And uh, at the end of the night, I would put all the pastries and shit outside next to the dumpster instead of throwing them in the dumpster so all the homeless kids could go and, you know, pick through them and shit. And uh, I wasn't supposed to, you were supposed to throw them in the dumpster and lock the dumpster, but I said, fuck that. Because they were always gone in the morning by the time the boss got home, or got to work, so. <coughs> anyway, uh, I was walking down, going to catch the bus, and this hippie guy comes up to me, and I, I, I don't remember his name, but I'm familiar with his face. He's like, thanks, man, for the fucking food all the time, you know? And he was high as fuck. He's like, you want a fucking trip tonight, man? And I was like, eh, I was off for the next day or two, so I was like, sure, man. He's like, open your mouth. And stupidly, I did, and he had an eyedropper, and he squirted a bunch of fucking acid in my mouth. Like, I could feel it. <laughs> and you're not supposed to. I could feel the shit running down the back of my throat. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? He's like, oh, man, you're going to be high. That was like 20 or 30 hits of acid, man. And he was right, because I used to, well, back when I sold acid, you know, I, I used to use an eyedropper to put the drops on individual hits, and an eyedropper will hold about 20 to 30 hits. So, I knew I was in trouble, so my goal was to get back to my house as soon as possible before the shit kicked in, right, because I, I didn't know what to expect on that many hits, I'd never taken more than like three or four at a time, and three and four, you're pretty high. Well, I got on the fucking bus and it kicked in, you know, usually it takes like an hour to kick in and shit, no, this kicked in like 20 minutes, <laughs> so I'm kind of fucked, and you know how like when you're on acid, like, you know, shit kind of breeze, you know, the colors are brighter, you know, you see tracers and shit, uh-uh. Not on 20 or 30 hits you don't, you lose your fucking mind, man. Like, like I almost went blind. I was, I was hallucinating so hard. I was seeing just shit like melt before my eyes. I couldn't read. Uh, my, my whole frame of vision was like constantly like shifting like that. I was like, what the fuck? And I missed my bus stop because I was high as fuck. I got off at the wrong bus, or the wrong bus stop. And I was only like maybe a mile away from my house, right? But I was so high, I couldn't even fucking walk straight, man. I ended up sitting next to the canal, talking to myself, until the sun came up. And I peaked for like five or six hours, man. Not like one or two hours, like with a couple hits. I peaked like at least five or six hours. I lost all concept of reality and time. It was quite spiritual, and I wasn't really scared, though, because I knew it was just the drug. So I was more worried that I couldn't find my way home. And I, it took me like eight hours, to, like, which should have taken me like 20 minutes, but I made it. I made it, and I was high for like two days. It kind of sucked. I started to get worried after a while because I was like, "Am I ever gonna not be high again?" <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that was my experience. I don't recommend taking that much LSD. Nah. But it's that guy, I went on his channel and he's talking about. I no, I watched that. It's quite shit to be honest, mate. But it, like, see, see him now, not right. See his channel. It's all like. Yeah, I'm saying this and like, but he's just like casual with it. It's Mate, like I think there's a difference between like Satan worshiping and Satanism or something. Like mm. some is people it like say ones, uh, Satanism okay. is just like still don't fancy it to be honest. No, mate. it Even doesn't sound that nice, does it? Um? <laughs> no, no, it does not. <laughs> but I mean, LSD is a crazy, crazy thing, and you know, obviously we spoke about it last episode, and we were sp speaking about it more in terms of like. Mid, like sort of what they were trying to d use it for good mm -hmm. trying to help schizophrenic people Aye. and shit like that well baby mk ultra was you try to use it for bad mate so i'm going to set the scene guys right so end of sort of end of world war Two, right obviously the the germans have been defeated 
the Nazis had been defeated, the good guys won, as they say in the movies and the blockbusters. Um, so we had we had beat them. So what happened is after the war ended, the US and UK went over to Germany, right? Because it was a fucking just it was disaster, right? They went over and just ransacked it for like information, um, research that they had done, like oh. like like weapons research, bio me- fucking mechanical weapons, aye, all this. They were doing all the experiments aye. and that. And aye. So they went over, right? And they went over to steal all this information because they'd obviously just they it's to to advance themselves as as countries as nations. So one of the documents that they found. The, the US found was the Osenberg, Osenberg list and that was a list of all the top scientists in Germany at that time like thousands of scientists right so what the US done was they took that document back and they sort of etched up a plan and they called it Operation Paperclip right and Operation Paperclip was an operation set up by the JIOA which is the joint Hold on, I've wrote it. Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, right? So they set this up. It's like a sort of version of the CIA. Um, They set up this operation to bring 1,600 German scientists and their families over to live in America to help them with the Cold War. Right. So if you don't know what the Cold War is, right, the Cold War is uh, a, a war that had no military conflict. It was all about, like... Propaganda, ha- at stealing I, like secrets off each other, the space race. It was all about what nation out of the US and the Soviets could could prosper the most and yeah. uh, get, become the most advanced. The technological, kind aye, of, aye. Like developing weapons, but like fucking what's he called? Like bio, bio, bio <laughs> weapons and that. Uh, obviously not me. The, the bio <laughs> weapons, not me. Um, but so they moved sixteen hundred of them over to to work for them against Russia, right? right? right, right. And so like they could, so they wouldn't fall behind. So they're still devel- So they took all the best sat German scientists and that, right? But they went back to the president, who tri- President Truman at the time, and they were like, "Look, we're going to bring all these people b- back." Operation Paperclip, bring them here, help us in the Cold War. And they was like, "Right, you can bring them, but no Nazis." Nay Nazis because we're just fucking been at war with them. Aye. That they stand for everything that we like. The like, bastards. Aye, they're, they're, they're the bastards, right? Aye. So he was like, nay Nazis whatsoever, right? But they, but that, <laughs> nay bother, mate. Nazis come on the plane, baby, oh, right? Bro, aye, it's happened, bro. Nazi, bro. <laughs> Nazi, bro. Don't care, bro. Was done, eh? <laughs> but it was some war, aye, by the way, mate. Heavy, done war, heavy, mate. Well, heavy mate. play to you in that honestly, war, bro. Honestly, what a war that was. <laughs> uh, but he, th- so they like disobeyed him, brought them over, and fucking um, burned all the documents, uh, evidence of them committing war crimes and stuff right, like that. Right. So even if they got found out they were Nazis, they couldn't get caught for being a Nazi. Prove it, mate. <laughs> Prove it, bro. <laughs> what you got to do? Prove it, bro. It's an ashes now, mate, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they brought them over, right? Which I thought, I was like, that's mad, like just to stay ahead of the Soviets. But mate, the Soviet Union went there, done the same thing and took... 2,200 German signs. <laughs> so they done the same thing on an even bigger scale. Took them to work for them against America, right? During the Cold War, um, obviously that was just after um, like World War Two. So what happened was, see, like, some obviously American soldiers would be deployed in communist countries, Korea, uh, China and shit, right? So they were obviously getting other soldiers back, right? But see, some of them, mate, some of them were like, nah, we like living under communism, actually. Right? And they're like, good on them. What? You <laughs> know what I mean? Like, they're like, I like living under communism. Um, and that, and then some came back and they would ask them about certain bits of the war and they had black, completely blank memories, mate. Zero, nothing. Couldn't remember whole chunks of it. Like, ye- a year. They're like, don't know. Fuck Can't sure. remember. <laughs> so, um, so they were like, instead of thinking maybe... Maybe they actually do like communism. That was not the thinking of the world at that time. They were like, they've been fucking brainwashed, right? <laughs> so they start freaking out, thinking, 
the commies have discovered how to brainwash people and like so they thought they had been brainwashed into light and communism <laughs> right so they're like fuck we need to immediately get on the case to try and control people's minds that is really? mental mate so so they I so they thought they had like discovered this and this is obviously at a time when they're, they're at war and they're like fuck they're ahead of us now we need to do that as well right but they hadn't they hadn't Aye. made they had actually discovered it right so they immediately got to work on their own mind control program and that program was called MK Ultra. Mm. Now, MK Ultra, right, is mad, right? Because MK Ultra is basically an umbrella sort of term for it's got 150 sub operations, right? Fuck so, three. so it's not just like one so thing. Does Operation Paperclip come under that as well? I, I no, I think that was like a precursor, right? right and then, right. like, so. So what what happened was they started MK Ultra. It had like over over the years, it got one hundred and fifty sub operations. Obviously, the thinking behind that is uh, you set up that many mini operations that nobody knows the final goal apart from who's at the top. Right, you know what I mean? Right, like right. it's the same thing. Like you ever heard Bob Lazar talking about it working at Area Fifty One? Mm -hmm. And like, see when you work at Area Fifty One, you only get told like we bring this in, you fix that, and do that, and do that. Like, you don't get told, this is an alien spacecraft, mate. And Aye. what weird, that, like, do you know what I mean? So they, they don't, only the people at the top know the information. So can I... Evil pyramid system. The e the most evil pyramid scheme there is. <laughs> so MK Ultra was started in 1953, and it was a secret mind control program. So the program was run by a man named Doctor Sidney Gottlieb, right? Sick, sick man. Um, so they carried out experiments for over a decade. And most of the people who took part in the experiments, uh, there was no consent. They didn't know they were taking LSD. They so could, uh, can you describe one of these experiments? What did they do? But they don't. They don't know. They don't know. Like obviously, only certain documents came out. So there's no like exact. There probably is somewhere, but there's no a lot of information on exact experiments they done. And because they tried to, but was it all they were LSD? Mate, it was. So they. So the thing is, right? The doctor Sidney Gottlieb has had had a history of like sort of how the mind works using drugs to alter people's states and that right so his plan they wanted to be able to completely control somebody's mind they wanted to they wanted to over the years it developed and they wanted to just basically create assassins mate that like you will go and kill somebody right like we can control you so you go and kill somebody you'll come back and you'll not no remember a single thing you done so that like you couldn't act, like you couldn't grasp yourself in. See the, so you could go and do the like the no the military, like the CIA's bidding, right? And then you come, you'd wake up the next day and no have a clue you done it. So how can you like admit to that or even like so so that they could and they wanted to implant memories in people's brains, erase memories. They wanted to make it so that like if they were at war, as soon as somebody got kidnapped they would forget everything they ever got like oh, they would mad. set it up so that the moment they got kidnapped they'd forget every secret they know about the cia in america aye and like that thing like they're just trying it's like, it sounds like they're just trying to create mad robots mate like aye. mad war robots oh that's it's evil mate it's like they kind of done it with like a, this just a wee kind of side mm -hmm. note the vietnam war they kind of made them they used to say about the vietnamese people they used to say like demonize them and mm -hmm. say here this is what they're like they're aye. no human mm -hmm. like they dehumanize people aye. that so, would be so easier to do if you are fucking i know i know MK, mate, it's not. crazy because obviously at the time right like they didn't like obviously uh, lsd was synthesized in 1943 big al hoffman i like put um, but he he synthesized it and then but it was never like people didn't between then and the 50s Nobody had it, like, recreationally. Aye. It wasn't a thing you just had, like, oh, mum will get full of acid. <laughs> wasn't it a thing back then? So the, the, do the doctor who was in charge of MKUltra was like, right, the thing that the thing we can use to, to control these people's minds is LSD. We'll blast... He wanted to... His, his plan was to blast away the existing mind and then cease control of it. How Mate, how mad is that? That's the evilest thing I've ever heard. Aye, they want and aye and then see in the nineteen fifties, mate, the early fifties. He's like, right, so we need to be able to control people's minds. So we're gonna need a lot of LSD. So do you know what he done, mate? He got the US to buy every single drop of LSD on the planet. <laughs> in the early 50s they bought it just a lot mate imagine that phone call mate I done that in my house what's happening bro <laughs> aye what you, what you after I'll take it all bro every bit of it <laughs> that's a crazy thing mate mate 
you active <laughs> on the phone to the world, uh, mate. On you the about. phone to the UN, the United Nations. <laughs> you about, bro? Uh, you about? Go work in the morning, fuck off, man. <laughs> Evan, can I ask, does MK Ultra mean mind control ultra with a K? No comment. I, know, I, I doubt it. But uh, it I'm <laughs> mind control ultra. <coughs> they just spelled it right. But basically the thing was, right, they thought that this drug could make them capture your brain, right? And anybody <laughs> who's took acid knows it does the complete opposite. Aye. It frees your brain. That's why, it, that's why, like, in the early 60s, there was probably so much anti-war pro- propaganda and shit. So they clearly didn't fully understand the drug at the time, right? So obviously in the early stages, we've got a video here, actually, the, the British Army on LSD. They should have used yellows. <laughs> yeah, aye, valleys. Aye. I know a guy. Right, let's watch this video, Troops. This is the British Army on LSD. I tried. Of incapacitating agent. <laughs> this film was made during the course of an experiment to test the possible effects of the drug, lysergic acid diethylamine oh, LSD, twenty-five for short. <laughs> On the troops in the field, the drug has been been widely used in hospitals for the treatment of mental disorders, <laughs> and it was administered to volunteers in a drink of water with no attempt to make it disperse it realistically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was good. Man. The troops who took part in this trial were volunteers <laughs> from 41 Royal Commando, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel R.P. Carter. <laughs> so this is like them, they, they're still trying to figure out like what, the, what we can do with this, what can we use it as to our advantage. Day, day two, drug, day three, control. <laughs> we're getting them tripping out their box. <laughs> They've been working hard. So. Aye. <laughs> I do like these old videos, but I could watch these all day, man. I'm just fascinated by the way people acted back then. Like, they're right. just different humans, I, I completely. The soldier said to the other soldier, That hits you yet, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at my box, Hedden. <laughs> do you want to go get a munch? <laughs> Phone an Uber. And many men are laughing. <laughs> just laughing. <laughs> so is this training all that? I thought I trained all that. Acid. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? I'm not imagining that. Two men have been killed by this fire. One of them is the radio operator, who by this time, 11:50, has become incapable of operating his set effectively anyway. Relief. <laughs> Reports the incident to troop headquarters, where the level they're all smiling and having a great time. Mate. Aye. But I mean, they tried to they tried to weaponize it. I mean, I love how like they done that and they were like having a great time and laughing. They're like, the this operation has failed. <laughs> 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 they were happy Aye, they and not ready for war. They didn't want to like go further in there. But see, see if you think about it, mate. Like you know what you know what the you know what old mother acids like no i know See, but but it's mad how in society mate like they tried to um they were like they got this amazing thing and they were like how can we use this as a weapon uh, no i mean it's clearly like no made for that but i so back on mk ultra so this guy's fucking setting up all these experiments right what the maddest one i heard about right was operation midnight climax you ever heard about this no you heard about this right so operation midnight climax is about Basically climaxing right on midnight. Nice. <laughs> no, it's, it's, so what they done, right, they set up, so they bought two apartments, right, and what they done was they had people in them behind a one-way mirror, so see how, like, in a police lineup and shit, Aye. you can see them, they can't see you, so there'll be a big, a, a one-way mirror in the room, and they would get sex workers to go and uh, go out in the streets and like, lure my drunk guys in and all that, lure them into an apartment, and then she would like say like, oh, do you want a drink? And then we'd get them get my drink, and it would have like, like fucking twenty hits of LSD <laughs> in it, mate. And they would drug them, and then they would observe. They would sit the other side of the mirror and observe what they were doing, and then they would go in, do experiments on them, try and like blow their mind. And mate, and like these people, this is against the Nuremberg Code, mate. Like against human rights completely. Wait, what does that mean, Nuremberg like, Code? It's like a big code. It's like Was you like, don't, you just yeah, don't do nothing on it. Nuremberg trials. Right, so the right. It was that the thing that they said, right? Would 
be sound, no punching Every the face cunt, and that. Every cunt, shout out. No kicking, no hardies, and that, aye. that was invented, didn't it? Aye, aye, that was basically when that was invented. Um, aye, no, that is, that is mental, mate. And aye. see, doing that, like, again, as we spoke about with Big Al, obviously RIP mm. and that, he took, what was it, five hits with uh, five tabs practically, without knowing he had. Aye. And he said that it rendered, it could render 50 men temporarily insane exactly. or something. Exactly. Imagine, like, no knowing, like, you're just out boozing, you get took in somewhere, Aye. and then you're drugged with that shit. <laughs> Mate, it's it's the most, une- like, this is the basically the government doing this to, so this is, this is the point in the all this is, like, Never even think that the government care about you. You are you are a small pawn in this game. Like you are very you're an expendable. Like that's like you look at the contempt. Like our government shows working class people and stuff like that. It's like never think these people are really actually doing things in your best interest. This is what uh, I'm not. But look, shit like this probably still happens. Do you know what I mean? Like mad. Maybe. But the reason that this was allowed to happen mostly, right, is because I'm not saying that the the CIA weren't totally behind it, but. Sidney Gottley worked under um, the two guys at the time, Richard Helms and Alan Douglas. They were like the, the in charge of the CIA at the time. And they told him, we don't want to know the details of this thing, mate. Aye, but they still facilitated it. No, mate. I'm not saying they're in the right, but that's why he was allowed to do whatever he wanted. Ooh. And he was obviously a pure mad doctor, mad Aye. scientist. So they weren't even monitoring what it was happening in it the full time. See, see what I've always thought, like, see where, like, stuff like that, like, just governments and stuff, and, like, uh-huh. see when you put, um, if you put, like, a face to it, right? Like, I've always thought, have you ever heard of the band The Enemy? The, uh, aye, aye, aye. And, like, now they sing about, like, they say, like, uh, you've, uh, your dinners went cold through the wind through a cracked up window and all that. Mm. Like, I've always thought if you showed that to a Tory, if you put that in the phones, they would, like, start greeting and be like, what the fuck am I doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, if you face people, if you put a face or a, like, an emotion or mm. a humanised thing to people, then they'll, like... I m- mate, most people wear a conscience with, but... So, but that guy, this fucking dude, he's, like, Dr Mengele and all that, like, Aye. with the Nazis and that. He's, Aye. like, the, he's, the, he's a proper evil cunt. Aye, mate, this, this thing, like... Basically, this thing started like this, and it just grew arms and legs and go way out of control, mate. So many mad people were involved in it. Um, it actually led to it. It went this far, right? Because they were so worried. The thing that they were really worried about was, you work for us, right? You work for the CIA. You know all this shit, right? What if you get caught by the Soviets? What if the Soviets are here and they capture you and get all your secrets, right? So do you know what they done, mate? They sent C4 to their scientists that had been working there for years on like other shit like this as well right seen horrible things done horrible things there was a guy called Frank Olsen right who was who was a scientist who was working on MK Ultra at the time in 1954 so this is kind of at the start of the programme they invited him to a retreat a CIA retreat go chill out for a couple of days blah 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 right no they were secretly dosed with LSD to, and then in like like interrogated to see if they would reveal any CIA secrets. So they were like dosing their own eight like scientists and all that, right? So what happened with Frank Olsen was he found out or like realized that he was dosed and he started freaking out. And he was, he, uh, people believe that when he was high on the LSD, he said like, I'm going to fucking tell everybody about this. Like he was threatening to like, whistleblow, go, like leak the, the details of the program. And they were like, obviously, like, nah, this can't happen. You know what I mean? So Frank, but he says, apparently, he went home and he, he says he was like unable to function normally after he got dosed with it, and he was feeling severely stressed, and um, he wasn't in a good frame of mind and shit. And then what happened was he went, he was in a hotel, um, Washington or New York, I remember. He was like, staying in a hotel with another CIA agent, and fucking about nine floors up or something and right out the window felt his death it's oh, like fuck's sake. and it got ruled as a, a suicide at the time like work related stress and they were like work mate that's no work when it comes uh, to that shit work related it? stress they were saying like oh he was stressed out because it's a high pressure job and he's obviously not been able to handle it and he's jumped out the window and died so that was the narrative at the time right but um, later like when all these documents came out about um, MK Ultra because see the only reason we know anything about this is right see in 19 see when the programme ended right the programme ended we'll obviously revisit this there's much more detail but when the programme ended I think it was like 70 
three seventy five something like that. The program ended, and that Richard Helms, who's been in charge of the whole thing, was like, "This is go out of control. Fucking burn all the evidence that any of this ever happened. D- like, fucking get rid of all. Ev- everything was destroyed and burned, mate. But they left medical records or financial records in a warehouse, like away from where they sold all the normal documents, and they got found later on, and everything got leaked about it. But it was like only what was in the documents. Like patchy bits. Aye. And- so and then stuff came out about Frank Olsen that like then in the investigation the window was too small that he could have got out and jumped out it himself if you know what I mean and all this shit so it real like the family chased it up years later Fuck's and sake. tried to get them like done for murder and shit and it's like but uh, uh, it's, it's a mad one man there's a whole series about it called One Wood on Netflix mate we could be watching that that could be a watch along oh, Patreon that'd be beautiful wouldn't it I mean that is fucking mental mm-hmm. like just because if you think about like what their intent is and all, mate, that is the most evil thing ever. Do you know Aye, what I mean? Because, mate, as well, like, see, when they first started it, they were like, right, because obviously this is what they do in programs like this. They go, who's the most expendable people in society? Let's do it on them. You know what I mean? So that's why they lure mad old drunk guys. So what they done was go into prisons, right? And there's a famous sort of gangster called J- w- uh, Whitey Bulger. You ever heard him? James Whitey Bulger, I think his name is. Um, he was in prison at the time and he was one of the ones that, they they gave him like LSD every day for like weeks, right? Lucky. Every single day they dosed him with LSD and other prisoners were in at that time and they, he said that they would dose him and ask him, like, you ever thought about killing anybody? Like all these and he hadn't killed anybody at the time, right? Hadn't he killed anybody? It was just for like theft and that he was in the jail. Aye. So they're like implanting all these things in his head, mate. He got out the jail and killed nineteen people. No way. Mm-hmm. And he says he believes, he was like, I didn't have a murderous streak in me until I got out of the jail that time. That is mental. And another thing, who was in the jail at that time also, in the 50s, in and out of jail constantly, in jail for half half his life at this point, Charles Manson. Oh. And he was also being experimented on. The guy with the Nazi tattoo on his That's face. the man. But that's for another episode. We'll need to revisit that because that's a whole episode that's in its own. That's a cliffhanger, that. That's that. a cliffhanger, as, as they say. And the only thing better than cliffhanger is Cliff Richard. <laughs> 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 Mate, I've done my own M- MK Ultra to myself, kind of. How? Oh, right. right. Self dosage? I, I kind of. I know, no, just that. Uh, I've took I've done my own M- MK Ultra. Mate, I was for acid and I watched fucking. What's that Ben Stiller yeah. film called Zoolander? Aye. And do you know how it's like, kill the president of Malaysia? And all that. And you know that bit? It's like, relax, come to Aye. it. And it comes up and it's like, you want to kill the president? No, and it's like, I know, mad. He's oh coming my God, and, like, I... and he's getting like brainwashed. He's getting Aye. him. I mean, I was sitting for acid like, there. <laughs> there, why do that? I hope you're getting up, man, getting ready for it. You can see why they thought it would do that, though, Aye. eh? Aye. No. It's very... Aye, it's like... Because your brain can be like, manipulated a wee bit. Like, if... See if I hear a noise, it's out there mm-hmm. and that, and it's like, and then oh, that will come in, and then that will change a lot of thoughts and mm-hmm. stuff. Like, see if you think about it now, like, see if you are taking acid now, know that we can do it. We hate anybody that's ever taken a drug in their life. If MD goes up to heaven and says, I took a drug once. That happens a lot to me, you better stop it. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> in the street are, oh, I take drugs, and I'm like, who the fuck are you, mate? Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Mad old guys for the men's shed and that. I'm mad at <laughs> your grand. <laughs> um, if you take if you take Aye. acid and stuff, right? Like you get worried that you would do something to hurt yourself. Like see if you were like holding a knife, you'd be like, oh, I better put that down. Aye. They were giving it to soldiers with bazookas, mate. Aye, pal. The man is physically incapable of finishing <laughs> the task. Of firing his bazooka. I <laughs> know. You're like, whoa. But it's just, mate, it's a very, it's a... It's a mad time in the world that, like, the 50s, 60s, CIA. Oh, it's just dirty, dirty stuff, man. Mate, do you want to know? Are you done with your MK Ultra then now? I'm finished, aye. I'm finished. For now. Um, so, see, just talking about, like, the 50s and 60s and that kind of old telly voice mm-hmm. and that, right? I seen a thing the other day, right? See, before, like, Johnny Carson, like, uh, chat shows and stuff, chat shows were, like, just coming about and they were very, like, informative. The uh, one they, like... So Casual, what have you been right. up to in that? Like, you know how now it's like there's two plants either side or someday mm-hmm. there's a, a cityscape and like a row of people talking and then like fucking Jay Leno or whatever. Like um, before it was like they didn't understand how to work it. There was there was none of that. Like I think it's called like visual grammar. Right. That right. fake shit that like you're just used to seeing mm-hmm. that like makes it like 
understandable in your head mm. for some reason. Like I don't say get it's it. an atmosphere Aye. in your brain, you're like casualness I and like, relaxed. Like, like podcasts, Aye. like we we kind of don't do that as much, like pure copy the mad what it's supposed to look like obviously Aye. we come up here and stuff sometimes so we get as far as we can Aye. <laughs> Aye, but i was watching like one of these first ever like broadcasted uh Hingley's, right uh chat shows and the guy that was on it was interviewing fidel castro and <laughs> it was like, so the only thing that you can find the only clip that's left it's like there's been a revolution over in havana so we're live from cuba tonight with fidel castro <laughs> Mate, and because they didn't know that, like, it was an age of like the information's not just aye. there every day, so it's like they didn't know he was like communist and enemy American aye. or that yet. And that it's just crazy. like Fidel Castro, so like, ah. <laughs> how mad is that? Mate, it is, it's just like you think about you think about um people for that period in time and what they believed about the world and that is fucking mental. Aye, they'll say, I mean, how mad is that? Fidel <laughs> Castro in a chat show. I just feel like everything's pure. Like a lot of shit that you watch and stuff now, it's like dead fake. Like obviously, like that it's entertainment and whatever, right? But like I can't watch like Channel Four shows that are like, and now we're gonna go and do this, not. And it's like everything's pure. You can tell, like when you watch a documentary, like the these James, days. like James Corden's chat show and exactly, all that. Exactly, aye. So dead like, like fake. Laughs over like, <laughs> I like you can tell like people have been like I'm gonna say this and then you laugh and then aye, aye it's like oh aye, that's why people love podcasts aye Pe- that that's dying mate it's dying with that old media kind of thing aye people don't people don't want to cut like th- you can tell that me and you don't have a script you know? no right if We've we did n- I'd be worried aye, 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 <laughs> highly worried <laughs> but like people don't want to watch people pure. But like I feel like that's like sort of our mom and dad's generation that will still sort of strip clean for, like all this mad. You're just like, what are you de- like? Is that, do you know what it is, right? Because I used to pure love things like this, but like, right, see, like my favorite. I used to pure love like Would I Like You and all that, right? Aye. And like that, like eight or ten cats, eight or ten. That I still can he watch that now? But like, see, I, I used to watch it for certain people. So I used to watch it for like Bob Mortimer. Aye. Right, aye. who I think's possibly the funniest man ever. Right, <laughs> like. The, uh, he's my favourite my favourite like comedian or like writer or whatever you would kind of categorise him as but I don't even watch them with him anymore cause favourite he's, Bob? he's got like no obviously the builders up there <laughs> like, he's got uh, Bo- uh, Bob Bob Aldi <laughs> Bob's Burgers now. Nah. Bob Baldy <laughs> Bob Robert Baldy <laughs> Robert Baldy um, I know but he's got a thing now just called like uh, Bob uh, gone fishing with Bob Mortimer. Aye, ah, I've him, seen it. I've seen it. Him in the trips out fishing. Mate, mate, that is like, the way forward, mate. Aye. Nay script, nay big fancy studio, um, nay fucking bright lights, nay green screen, nay, nay, nay like, mics, headphones, aye, all that shit. Nay, like fake get out shit. of nature and get get it done. See mm-hmm. all the people that are doing all that shit. Get a fucking life, man. Seriously. But yes, mate. I get what you're saying. It's a it's a dying art form. I think, that and I think me. people want the realness. Yeah, and it does not get realer than deep fried baby. Does so not. troops, another episode done. Boom boom in the bag. As they say, you know the script. You want us to look at something? Comment. Tell us. Tell us what you want us to look into to investigate. Um, we hope you enjoyed it, man. We hope Aye. you enjoyed Thanks it. Thanks for like being here. Like. Thanks for being here, and remember. The extra deep fried is coming. Big things are happening, people. The hoodies are coming. The the Russian soldiers are coming. I think yep. I can hear them outside. Aye, shit. We well, better go. go. Aye, shit, we did. We told them we'd be out there for like half nine. So I don't know. For, for the meat. Aye. Aye. Shit, better we, go. We right. Go. Cheers, troops. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>